Hi, I'm Sandhya Sriram, the group CEO and co-founder of Shiok Meats. And today at World City, I'm going to talk about a new world of food. The population is going to be 10 billion in the next couple of decades on this one earth that we have. Currently, the demand for protein and food is already high with the 7 billion population that we are. But as we grow to 10 billion, the demand for meat, seafood, protein, and food is going to increase. But we have to keep in mind that we have to create a sustainable food future for our kids and grandkids and the future generation. So coming to that, the world has been looking at alternative protein and food sources for the last couple of years. The end goal is to have a sustainable food system that provides healthy, nutritious, cruelty-free, and a sustainable source of food for everybody on this planet Earth. So what's happened in the last couple of years is we have managed to work on innovative ideas in the food sector, including plant-based meats, insect-based meats, as well as cultivated meats or proteins. This can vary from sources from plants, insects, or stem cells. And today I'm going to talk a lot about the cultivated meat and seafood uh, sector. But let's talk a little bit about the plant-based sector. I think everybody now knows about Beyond Burgers, Impossible Foods, Omni Meat, and so on. And these are all meats and seafood that is made from plants. They are vegan, vegetarian, cruelty-free, and delicious as they are trying to make a sustainable food system as well. Over the years, we have managed to find insect protein that's extremely delicious and nutritious as well. And you might find cricket flour, you might find uh, black soldier flies pasta out there, and these are delicious and a great source of nutrition and protein as well. Coming to my favorite source of protein, which is cultivated meat or seafood. As you can see from the pictures in the slide, you can see that these are real meats, real seafood, that is made from stem cells and not from the entire animal. I'm gonna talk a lot about that today and talk about how we make these proteins from stem cells. A very simple infographic here to make you understand how cultivated meat and seafood is made. If you look on the left on the slide, you can see that we have used the analogy of growing fruits, vegetables, and plants in a greenhouse. So what we do in a greenhouse is we take a small cutting of a plant or a seed and we put it into a controlled environment. We control the water, the temperature, the pH, the humidity, and how much sunlight or how much water these plants get. And in a couple of weeks or months, what you get is real plants, real fruits, real vegetables, but except that it was made in a controlled environment and not in, in an agricultural land where environmental effects or climate change might affect the yield of the proteins. Similarly, if you look at the infographic on the right on the slide, you can see that we can make cultivated meat and seafood using stem cells, very similar to how we grow plants in a greenhouse. So what we do is take a small biopsy out of an animal and what we take out is stem cells. Stem cells have this amazing capacity to grow outside of the animal's body as long as you provide the right nutrition, temperature, pH, and so on. So what we do is we take out muscle or fat and or connective tissue stem cells out of the animals by either a small biopsy or from one animal or a couple of animals without having to slaughter millions and billions of them. And what we do is we grow these stem cells in a large stainless steel vessel, much like a brewery, but instead of brewing beer, it's brewing meats and seafood. And what you see at the end of four to six weeks at the case of Shiok Meats, where we work on cultivated shrimp, crab, and lobster, is real shrimp, crab, and lobster meat at the end of the day. You can use these meats as you use conventional meat and seafood in any dish that you like, be it dumplings, be it spring rolls, noodles, rice dishes, or your favorite sushi, or your shrimp cocktails. So this is how a manufacturing plant of a cultivated meat or seafood company will look like eventually. It is not grown in a lab, it's not grown in a petri dish, it's not grown 
uh, with a lot of chemicals. It's actually grown in the most safe, clean, and nutritious way possible in large stainless steel reactors or fermenters or vessels, as you can see in this picture. As you can see, it looks like a brewery, but instead of beer inside or making yogurt or chocolate, for example, we are actually making meat and seafood that is real to the cellular level as such. The final product is as delicious, nutritious, and healthy as conventional meat, but it doesn't come with all the climate change issues that it has. It is free of antibiotics, free of harmful chemicals or hormones. It is better for the environment because we actually use lesser land, lesser energy, lesser water, and lesser resources compared to conventional farming. And there's, we are very, very aware of how healthy and nutritious these proteins need to be. We also take into consideration animal cruelty. There is no slaughter in these, uh, or very less slaughter, because we do have to sometimes access the animal for the stem cells. But like I said, it's one versus billions of animals that are slaughtered every year for human consumption. At the end of the day, what we produce is still real meat and real seafood. And trust me, I've tasted these, and many other people in the world have, world have tasted these, and they say the same thing as well. Just looking at the landscape of cultivated meat and seafood in the last couple of years, this industry is less than 10 years old. In fact, it started up around 2013 or 2014 when the first cultivated meat hamburger was made by a professor in the Netherlands and he showcased it on a TV show in London. I think this was 2013. And ever since I saw it, I was super intrigued by the technology. I am a stem cell scientist by education and background, and I've always been a lover of good food, much like everybody else. But I've been a vegetarian throughout my life for ethical and envi environmental reasons. So putting my love for science and stem cells and you know, passion for food together, it made sense to sort of start a cultivated seafood and meat company. Looking at this landscape, I think this, this landscape is a little old, it's, it's about a year old, um, but there are over 100 companies globally that are working on cultivated uh, proteins, be it beef, be it pork, be it chicken, even foie gras, be it duck, or even protein like eggs and dairy, cheese, milk, and so on. There are even companies that are trying to make infant milk uh, by using stem cells and the technology behind it. We, as in Shiok Meats, is a cultivated seafood company that predominantly works on crustacean meat, like shrimp, prawn, crab, lobster, crayfish, much like we love it all. And we have a unique positioning, as you can see from this landscape, that we are the only company globally working on shrimp, crab, and crayfish. And even among the cultivated seafood space, we are only a handful of companies, and we're delighted to be part of this industry where we can add a nutritious and sustainable food source for the entire population of this world. The company was started in August 2018 by myself and my co-founder, Kai. We both are in the middle in the picture. We both are stem cell scientists with over 20 years of combined experience in the field. I have personally worked on muscle, adipose, connective tissue, even dental and neural stem cells in the past, all in the field of healthcare. But as I said, over the years, I've developed a keen interest in the food system and wanted to be part of the sustainable food ecosystem that we're trying to build by working on an extremely disruptive and innovative technology. Three years back, when we started the company, we were just two of us. We have grown to over 35 people currently. We're all in Singapore, and this is where we are headquartered. We have a whole mix of engineers, scientists, business professionals, and extremely passionate people who want to work together to make the food system as sustainable and nutritious as possible. I'm just not talking about the technology. It's just not an R&D project. It's just not in the lab, in the Petri dish, as I mentioned. The technology has been proved by us and other companies to work to a small scale at this point. It is going to take us a couple of years to get to the scale that we want to be in terms of mass production but we are not very, very far away. 
we are cracking the code as we speak in terms of getting the product to market. For us at Shiok Meats, as you can see from these delicious dishes here, we have managed to show prototypes and showcase the products in different types of Asian cuisines, European and American cuisines. As you can see here, the first prototype of cultivated shrimp by Shiok Meats was showcased back in 2019, very early when we started the company. We were able to prove that the technology works and we can make at least one dish with the meat that we're producing. The siumais were indeed delicious, and it's just not me talking about it. We had other external parties taste it as well. Then 2020, even through all the world pandemic and the lockdowns that we have had, our team has managed to push the innovation as much as possible. And in fact, the pandemic has accelerated the need for a sustainable food system and a regional and localized food system as well. So that pushed us to showcase our cultivated lobster in many dishes like the gazpacho or bisque, as well as a terrine. And very recently, in August 2021, we launched the world's first ever cultivated crab in our much beloved chili crab and crab cakes. All of these dishes were tried and tested over time, and we have had multiple people taste it. We are not commercially available yet, but we are still at the R&D stage to get to a point where we can start commercially selling these products and all of you can enjoy it on your tables. Singapore has been extremely bullish on the entire alternative food uh, meat uh, sector as well. And what they've been doing is they launched the 30 by 30 food story or the mandate that said that they want to increase the local food production from the current 10% to 30% by 2030. What that means is currently we are actually importing 90% of the food that we are eating in terms of the 5.5 to 6 million population that we are in Singapore. That is quite alarming. Food safety and security is of utmost concern for the regulators and for the consumers as well. And hence the country has put all its resources together to make sure there's enough infrastructure, funding, consumer education, grants that are available, as well as support that's required for companies like us to go global, as well as global companies to come to Singapore to set up their uh, headquarters, manufacturing and technology here. So as you can see here, Singapore, in fact, is the only and the first country in the entire world to approve a cultivated meat product. This is by a company called Eat Just from the US. And currently in Singapore, you can walk into one of these restaurants and buy cultivated chicken in a couple of dishes and enjoy it without any guilt. And it's nutritious, it's healthy and tasty. And I've tried it and I can vouch for it. But moving on, as you can see from the clipping in the middle on the slide, there are so many food innovation and food innovate, uh, sorry, innovative companies in Singapore that are global. Like I mentioned, either they are Singaporean companies or global companies that have come to Singapore to set up their R&D base or manufacturing here. It's a super exciting time for us, and I think we are riding the, the highest wave in the food tech side of things. And this is the way we should go, because at the end of the day, humans have to eat, and we all love to eat, and the food has to be nutritious and healthy. I think one of the questions that all of these alternative protein companies had is, yes, we have an innovative solution, we have a great product, but are consumers willing to try it? I think just the sheer interest by the consumers in these products, the questions that they ask, the discussions that are uh, done in the media or on social media, for example, show that the consumers are looking for something good in terms of the food uh, ecosystem. So we did a survey among Singapore residents, I think it was around 850 participants, and we found out that 78% of them are interested in cultivated meat and seafood. That is a huge number. And recently we also did another study uh, in Hong Kong that showed that 95, over 90% of them are interested in cultivated meat and seafood. That means the consumers want it, they need it, and they're willing to try it. And all we need to do is to get to market and get these consumers to be interested. 
I've talked about everything that's great and positive and why we are a great industry. But this involves a lot of funding and a lot of infrastructure. Till date, Shiok Meats has raised about 30 million US dollars from very, very passionate and mission aligned investors from Singapore, from Asia, from Europe and the US. But having said that, 30 million sounds like a lot of money, but we do have to raise more to get this to mass scale production, where we can say that a certain percentage of the conventional meat or seafood market is sort of transitioned into cultivated meat or seafood, or we are able to produce more protein as the demand is rising. We're not just a cultivated seafood company working on shrimp, crab, lobster, and crustaceans. Recently, Shiok Meats acquired a red meat company that is also a Singapore-based company called Gaia Foods, and I'm super excited to make that beef and shrimp dumpling ready for all of you in the next couple of years. It's an exciting time where companies are looking to collaborate either by consolidation, by acquisitions, M&As, or working on joint ventures, because honestly, we all need to pool our resources together to make this a unique success for this planet. So what's next for us at Shiok Meats is that we are super excited to build our commercial plant next year in Singapore, in our home country, and get that first product out, which will be the shrimp product, to all of you at a couple of restaurants by 2023. That's what we're looking into and working very hard to make sure we hit that timeline. Thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to say that we all need to work together to get the world to eat sustainable. And one of the last lines I'll leave you with is take an extra, take an extra 60 seconds before you buy or put any food product in your mouth to think whether it's sustainably sourced and that will truly make the difference and all of us can help make that happen. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Shikha Malhotra. I'm the chief of staff at Shiok Meats. And today with me, I have our CEO and co-founder, Dr. Sandhya Sriram. Sandhya, how do you feel today? I feel great, Shikha. How are you? I'm good. So we've discussed a lot about Shiok Meats and the alternative protein ecosystem. And today, all the meat from our conversation is going to get to the world. And let me just start by asking you, everybody's heard so much about this technology, but they have this one question on their mind all the time, which is that if and when cultivated meat and seafood will ever become a dinner staple. Love to get your thoughts on that. Sure, I mean, I think I sort of touched upon it during my presentation. I did say that uh, it is gonna take us a couple of years to get there. It's not gonna happen overnight. Uh, this industry is less than 10 years old. And every industry honestly takes at least a decade to get to a point where it can be some sort of a mass scale. I don't know if that means 5%, if it means 10%, or it means 1%, right? And we are going after an industry that's a multi-trillion dollar industry. And it has, has its own set of challenges in terms of, you know, the lobbying that happens with the meat industry to how expansive the seafood industry is and so on. Um, so having said that, I think when people ask me, would cultivated meat uh, be like 10% in 10 years? I would say I, would, I want it to be 25% or even 50%, right? But I think if you're looking at a multi-trillion dollar industry, you have to keep in mind that even 1% is a lot. Absolutely. And I think all of us are working towards that. Um, so given that the technology is less than six, seven years old, and it is a biomedical technology that we're taking that is extremely expensive, extremely niche and small scale into an industry that's commoditized and very cheap and mass scale, which is the food industry. Okay. It is going to take us a couple of years to transition that. And I think most of the companies, especially in 2021, are looking to commercialize in the next two to three years. So that means we are reaching that point of that 1%, 5%, 10% in the next decade. It will become a dinner staple, but it's not going to happen in the next three to five years. It is going to take longer than that. And also the question is whether we are replacing conventional meat or we are adding an additional food source. At this point, I would say we're adding an additional food source because the demand for meat and seafood is higher. So for you as a consumer to walk into a supermarket and go to the frozen aisle and see one aisle of cultivated meat or seafood, the other aisle of plant-based and the other aisle conventional, 
if you as a consumer decide to pick up the same type of meat, let's say shrimp, from cultivated, plant, and conventional, and eat it three times in a week, it's okay. You've, you've replaced, or as a consumer, you're eating more alternative food options. That's what we envision to see. But eventually, in 25 years, if you can make your own meat in your house with a meat reactor or bioreactor, wow. I think that's the ultimate vision, right? Th that sounds very interesting. And actually, I'd like to pick a cue from that, which is on the consumer level. So imagine I'm a consumer. I'm, I'm still not sure of what this technology entails or you know, what, what am I putting in my mouth exactly? Because all I've seen and heard about is science and R&D and testing and experimentation. So if I'm a prospective consumer, what would you say to me uh, to sort of enhance my confidence when I'm consuming something like this? Yeah, I think one of the key things that we have been doing at Shiok Meats, or I would say most of the cultivated meat companies are doing, is consumer education. You know, the product is not in the market yet. We are a couple of years away, but we're still talking about it so much. We're talking to consumers about how it's made. Uh, you would have seen the infographic on the slides, which we continuously use a lot. But it's pretty much, you know, uh, making it simple to understand. But if people want to know more, we are happy to give those answers. Um, one of the key things that I didn't touch in my, uh, in my presentation was how we grow these cells in a nutrient solution, which is called, we call it cell culture media. But it's nothing but a liquidized or a, you know, liquefied form, sorry, liquefied form of what the animal would eat in nature. So if you take a uh, shrimp, for example, in the, in the ocean or in the rivers where they, wherever they are, they, they feed on algae and seaweed and so on. So what we do is we take extracts from these and you know, we sort of put it in a liquefied form and feed it to the, the cells. So these are some of the intricate details of the technology. But overall, it's basically taking a part of an animal, which, which is the stem cells, and stem cells love to grow outside of the animal. And we have cracked that code as humans, you know, in the last couple of decades. And what we do is we just trick the cells to think that they're still inside the animal, but they're put into a very controlled environment that doesn't need the use of antibiotics or uh, chemicals. There is no climate change that is affecting it. There is no um, issues or environmental issues that are affecting it. So you're pretty much growing it in a controlled environment and you know, at the end of the day, when you cut that piece of meat, it is exactly the same piece of meat that you would get from a slaughtered animal, except that this doesn't come from an animal, but it's the exact same thing. Right. So I think this is sort of what we'd like to, what, what we'd like consumers to understand. And I think one of the things that we have always faced is we are always confused or people think that we are like the plant-based meats, you know? <laughs> yes. And then we have had to go back, take a step back and tell them, Plant-based meats are made from plants, cultivated meats made from cells. There is a difference you know, in, the, in the ultimate product and the technology. Yeah. Right. And how important do you think uh, would it be for us or any other company to turn this into a culinary experience and, and showcase our products in the most loved and local dishes? I mean, that is one of our main uh, you know, objectives with Shiok Meats as well, as you know. And, you know, we, we have a full-on culinary food tech team that is every day looking into delicious dishes that they can make with our products. And as I'd shown in the pictures, we have shown it in real products that we literally eat day to day, you know, like your dumplings and your crab cakes and your chili crab and so on. And uh, for us, you know, we are in Asia targeting the APAC market, and we'd like to keep the dishes very regional as well. So we're trying different dishes. I'm sure we're gonna have a sushi at some point. Uh, I can't wait for that. And um, we are trying it in a gazpacho, which is very much a European sort of Western sort of a dish. But we are, we are definitely working on making sure that these dishes can fit different cuisines. We can showcase it. And people think of it as food and not as science, mm -hmm. or not as cells grown in a lab in a Petri dish, for right. example. Because right. At the end of the day, like I'd shown, it's grown in a food safe manufacturing facility and it's very much like any other food product. Yeah. Right. And when you talk about all this, and you know, I've seen that closely working at Shook Meats, that the right people for this job, it, it's really hard to find them. Because as, as you're saying, the technology is new, even converting into a culinary experience is, is a whole different ballgame. So 
from a founder perspective, how has hiring and talent acquisition, you know, in, in, in Asia specifically uh, been for you? It has been hard, but I think it's been hard due to a couple of reasons. I think COVID definitely hasn't helped it with all the border restrictions and, you know, people not having, not able to sort of move across countries and so on. But other than that, I think one of the key challenges for us has been that there are people who have the right skill set, who are great for the job, but they don't identify that they fit into the alternative protein industry. Because we are essentially taking scientists that have worked for years in healthcare and telling them to start thinking about food. But when we start talking to them and making them realize that their skills actually fit what we require is when they realize that they actually fit into, the, into this industry. And we're looking at a technology that's biology, biotechnology, chemistry, physics, and engineering. And then, of course, you have finance and marketing and branding and all of that eventually. But on the R&D side, you're looking at all of these sort of uh, different sectors, the, what you want people from. So you definitely need people who are cross-trained across different disciplines and who have the, I don't know how else to put it, but think out of the box sort of capability and definitely have the passion for food, right? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, at Shiok, for example, we get to eat so many different products every day. <laughs> we, you know, we're trying different things and um, it's interesting. So we all have to come together to make that happen. Coming to talent, I would say because we are over 100 companies globally now, we are all fighting for the same talent, honestly. And the exact same talent is what the vaccine industry also wants. And, you know, we are sort of, yeah, I wouldn't say either or is, you know, not important, but both are important. Um, but I think with Shiok, at Shiok, we've been quite blessed. We have really, really good people. I mean, growing a team from 2 to 35 could be a nightmare. Um, yes, it has its own challenges and so on, but for us, it's been a pleasant experience, honestly. I mean, people who joined us two, two and a half years back are still in the company, have really shown that they're capable and passionate. And I love building a team as a founder. And it, it's a thrilling experience to have all these people. And I think one of the words that I would associate with our team is just happy. You know, happy, satisfied, and we love working together. Even, I mean, for the last two years, we have worked a little too virtually but I'd like to sort of get back to some sort of normalcy in the next couple of years. Yeah, I, I can totally vouch for that. <laughs> um, so what I'm hearing is that this technology, along with the whole, um, you know, the idea of talent, has the capability to unite the world in a very different way because we're hiring people from all across, right? And I think that's going to be interesting to see how it unfolds in the next one year when uh, we are hopefully out of the COVID situation. Um, and I think uh, to sort of conclude, uh, and we are, because we're headlining the Singapore stage, I mean, it goes without saying that we are blessed to be at this place at the right time. But we also know that a lot of cell-based meat companies are eyeing Singapore or they're thinking about having some sort of facility here. Now, the battleground is heating up. And as a pioneer, what is going to be your strategy and how are you um, envisioning the next few years to be here? Work with all of them. That's my strategy. <laughs> I mean, we have to collaborate. I think, I think it's been interesting, like positively surprising that this industry actually collaborates a lot more than competing. Uh, you know, I, I interact with most other founders of cultivated meat companies and I've realized that they're very open to like listening and talking and sharing and seeing where we can work together. I think that's the way to go. Um, it can't be monopolized. It, it can't be one company only working on one type of protein or one type of meat. It has to be all together. And I'm so excited because in 2018, when we started Shiok, we were the only company in Singapore and Southeast Asia. And now we're, I think, uh, Singaporean based, we're about four or five companies, and then we have a couple of companies uh, from outside, you know, set up here. I'm so excited that the ecosystem is getting built. And I'm so excited that the government is so bullish on all of this that, like you said, right time, right place. And it's a great technology, so why not? Absolutely. Thank you, Sandhya. This has been great. I mean, I, I would say that I knew most of it. But yeah, <laughs> just, just to hear it from you, it, it sort of um, yeah, tells you the perspective. Um, it's important that companies, uh, consumers, uh, policymakers, uh, regulatory bodies, uh, and even the media, you know, uh, sort of place together in this. Uh, it's about education, as you said, the first thing, and then moving on to adoption before we, um, you know, I, I like the bigger industry. 
So thank you for sharing your thoughts, and I'm glad that we could do this. Uh, thank you, and I hope you enjoy listening to us. Thank you.